This is Outnumbered. I'm Sandra Smith. Here today is Harris Faulkner, Andrea Tanteros, host of Kennedy on our sister network, Fox Business Kennedy. And today's hashtag, one lucky guy. We welcome back Dr. Keith Ablo, and he is outnumbered. Indeed, hey. happily outnumbered. Welcome Aww. back to the couch. Everybody has the same question for me when I like get back home. Uh, how is it? How is it <laughs> being there, <laughs> sitting with them? Say. Dare you know? we ask your response generally? Humbling. I always Aww. say this, it's Do humbling. Do you tell them that uh, we drive you crazy? <laughs> The question everyone asks um, you is, am I crazy? Do no. people ask uh, do, different questions? Normal or nuts? Do you normal get that or I get a lot of normal or nuts questions. That's true. Is my husband normal? Is he not normal? Are we normal or are we nuts, Dr. Hamlet? So, so far, you're <laughs> tilting toward normal, but I'm okay. always <laughs> polling. It's a oh, constant no. diagnostic process. That's right. That's well, right. let yeah. us know after the next 55 minutes. I'll try to give you a is. diagnosis. <laughs> All right. Well, another day, another stunner in Hillary Clinton's email scandal. According to the Associated Press, the State Department has told investigators that the classified material on Hillary's homebrew server was so sensitive that the safe it gave her lawyer to store those emails wasn't secure enough. State installed that special safe at the offices of David Kendall, Clinton's lawyer, back in July after the government determined that some of her emails may have classified information. But now, officials are saying they didn't anticipate that some of the messages would contain top secret information, information which they found in some of Clinton's emails. Top secret information, the highest classification of government intelligence, requires that it be kept in a highly secured facility, hardened against hackers or eavesdropping. And clearly, Kennedy, we're learning today that wasn't enough. Of course it wasn't enough. And I know we're going to talk about some of the excuses that her husband has been making for her. And now, every time she says, well, it wasn't marked classified to begin with, those excuses are wearing so incredibly thin. And people are moving on to the next phase, which is, well, what was really compromised? And of course, we can't know that because it's top secret information <laughs> that, uh, that hackers and people who had access to our server certainly shouldn't be privy to. But there could be some very jarring revelations once uh, all of that comes out. What continues to shock me through this, and Harris, maybe I shouldn't be shocked, you, you, you need to set the record straight, is how the State Department can't, couldn't have or should have anticipated that there could possibly be top secret emails, considering you, she was Secretary you of State. That's such a beautiful point, <laughs> and it brings up a big question that I have for them. Is this a colossal disaster in terms of leadership from the top down at the State Department, that they would not recognize, with or without a marking, what is classified and what is not. And they are in charge of our safety. They're part of that curtain of national security that protects us from the rest of the world. They decide when we can and can't travel. They decide who can travel here. They make those kinds of important decisions every day. And that this is so basic and that they would miss you know, you might want to lock the safe. Maybe the safe needs to be more impenetrable. Maybe it, that they can't get the basics right really has me concerned. So what's it like now? I mean, I, you know, we're doing Good deals question. with Iran. We got John Kerry out there, State Department, I mean, Secretary of State, where he's doing deals with Iran. Are his secrets safe? It's a great point, Dr. Keith. If they got this so wrong, what else is out there that we're going to find out about? Well, potentially almost anything. And I think that because everybody has email, uh, there's a tendency to kind of poo-poo this in a way, right? That's what Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton are hoping for, that people say, well, you know, sure, emails go astray. This is a real national security issue. We're fighting a cyber war all the time, and we can be hurt as much, almost, with data-driven war, if you will, as physical war. Now, when people grasp that, finally, they may understand the gravity of what's happened here. It's like letting down your defenses in any other way. And that's mm -hmm. what this Secretary of State did. Yet, so she can't lead. But yet through all this, Andrea, the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, she maintains that at that time she was doing nothing wrong. Right. So to Harris's point, this is bigger than the State Department. I mean, you say, how could the State Department mm -hmm. allow this? How could the administration allow this? Right. But again, let's look at the other stories we've covered here on the show and in the news cycle. This is the administration that presi presided over the largest hack of information in our government's history. Millions of people compromised. So it's not surprising. Again, this isn't just Hillary Clinton. This is an administration-wide problem. Two, 
This flies in the face of everything Clinton has set up until this point. Remember, she said, there's nothing top secret. It's just yoga poses and downward dogs and wedding plans and all this other stuff. So they actually just contradicted their former Secretary of State. And another point, does this even really matter? I mean, who cares if her lawyer had emails that could be compromised? They've been compromised long ago. China's got them, Russia's got them. To mm. me, this is a non-story. It just points to more government and And Andrea's right about uh, you know other organizations, not just the White House, but you, you have to know that the, the CIA was certainly yeah, exactly. uh, conversing with the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. So why aren't yeah, these organizations who are uh, charged with protecting our national security raising red flags and sounding alarm bells that the Secretary of State has a, a home system that is not impervious. So we've moved beyond, can Hillary get over this politically? We've moved past that. Now we're asking the question, can we move past this as we look at our national security being compromised well, in a big way? And I would way? ask, when are we going to stop treating email like it was created yesterday? Mm -hmm. This is not new technology. Yeah. We need to catch up. I think, Sandra, you yeah, just absolutely. asked a great question, and that is, even if this story moves on, should we as a nation because we are at risk and we talk about that every day but meantime former president bill clinton well he's making new comments about hillary's email woes just a day after blaming republicans for the scandal he said this i'm glad it happened in 2015 and 20 instead of 2016 and i believe it will burn itself out what the american people have to think of is this a few months ago she was still the most admired person in public life in america why? Because she was covered because of the work she did. So will the scandal burn out, like Bill says? What do you think, Dr. Ablo? Is this wishful thinking by the former president? Well, I, I think it's very wishful because uh, she wasn't the most admired person, most admired woman because of the work she did. The work she did, by any measure, is, is you know, not grandiose. It, she hasn't done a tremendous amount of things that would merit high achievement marks as a mm -hmm. secretary of state or as a senator. She was mostly admired because she struck a good pose with the president of the United States. Right? I mean, I continue to think most of her steam came from being first lady, not from being a, a, a great senator or a great secretary of state. I think that's disingenuous on yeah. Bill Clinton's part. When you press liberals uh, and Democrats, Kennedy, they really can't come up with an accomplishment that she made. But doesn't, doesn't it really depend, though, whether Clinton's right, Bill Clinton, I should say, how the FBI treats this? I mean, this could burn out. He could be right. But it just depends on how willing this administration is to take this seriously. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, it's, it's not one of the typical Clinton scandals. It's not the 90s. Um, the response that he has is not only inappropriate. You know, they're not grasping the scope of what everyone else seems to be, especially mm -hmm. voters in places like, oh, I don't know, Iowa and New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And uh, his excuse excuses are wearing so thin that it almost betrays a panic in Clinton land because when they're trotting Bill out for interview after interview and he's not giving any sort of substantial response, it shows either that uh, maybe he has lost the magic and is a step slower mm -hmm. or B, this, uh, this may be something that eclipses their ability to actually deal with I it. I mean, again, Harris, at best, the best case scenario is she just wasn't up for that job. That is the message coming from her campaign. And it's a pretty, I would say, underwhelming message for somebody who wants the highest office. Well, I tell you what, if this takes a criminal turn, they'll probably borrow some of that language to keep her out of, out of mm -hmm. hot water. You know, we haven't seen that yet. We don't exactly know what the FBI has gathered in its uh, investigation. They're being compelled by a judge to share it with the State Department. So we're all curious to know what they found. Um, but you mentioned the equivalent to the human resources for the government getting hacked recently mm -hmm. and how we found out that it wasn't a million or so, it was six million fingerprints that were part of that hacking mm -hmm. and all the background checks that were exposed and all of that. You know, I, I mean, it's just a TikTok, I would imagine, um, before we hear Hillary Clinton's campaign say, well, you know, she was a victim of a government that doesn't know how to protect anybody. Huh. We haven't heard that argument well, yet. Right. But she was a substantial part of the government, and the truth is we need to be secure. Mm -hmm. This is another way in which we're not secure. It hints at right. other physical realities where we're insecure. Well, let's, let's assume that she does co-opt that message then, Sandra. How does she, the woman who couldn't arguably do her job mm -hmm. and protect national security, who doesn't have one accomplishment that Democrats can name, how can she then argue that she will preside over a dysfunctional administration that keeps getting hacked? She can't. 
Well, I know we're sitting here talking about whether or not she's going to be able to move on for this or if there's any scandal too big for the Clintons. Well, what choice do they have? I mean, she's she's still leading in the polls uh, as far as the Democratic ticket's concerned. So why not? You just persevere, you push through. And I wonder if this was sort of the parallel to her Benghazi moment when she said, what difference does it make? When in that same interview, Bill Clinton uh, finished by saying, what exactly does it matter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we all sitting here can answer that question. I think everybody listening at home can answer that Ask question. David Petraeus. It Ask matters. Sandy Berger. What does it matter? You know, these, these are people who've been uh, charged and convicted of the same thing that she's being accused of. And I think, uh, to Harris's point, the FBI is being so tight-lipped yeah. because they are, they're building a, a real case here. Yeah. Yep. Ask the members of the military who died fighting in Libya. Mm -hmm. She their was families, providing over that. Yeah. yeah, or their families. All right. For the first time since those videos were released, allegedly depicting the sale of fetal tissue, the head of Planned Parenthood testifying before the House Oversight Committee, some of the fireworks from earlier, and whether the fight against the group will backfire. Also, school assignments getting some parents in one district pretty upset. They say their middle schoolers are learning about Islam in a way that they say goes against their religion. And right after the show, catch more from the couch. Literally, we've got the couch. It's called free therapy today. Outnumbered <laughs> overtime, www or foxnews.com slash outnumbered. Click that OT tab. Start sending your questions to Dr. Keith. Normal or nuts? We're taking oh, no. them right now. I'm ready.